majestic God of heaven living in me gentle Savior closest friend strong deliver beginning and end all within me falls at your throne Jesus 
says people. Literally says people. One of those places was on a hillside by a lake where we are told 5,000 were there. And another was where I thought, what's that?
food replacement power plant. And I was beginning to feel weak because the problem with going a long time without food is that the body starts using muscle mass in order to survive. And I became quite ill, truth be told. And the thought of food, or lack of it, became everything. It's not something I would ever want anyone else to go through, because after a while, you stop feeling hungry. But for the average person, skipping the occasional breakfast or grabbing the odd sandwich instead of having a full meal might leave them hungry or thirsty, but it's not dangerous. However, if we simply have no appetite, and that continues, it could be a sign that something is physically wrong with us. It's the same with spirituality. In the roots of our being is a hunger and a thirst for God. However, we might not realise it's God. We may just call it a niggle. A sense that something is missing, or a feeling that there is something or someone else out there, some higher being, someone in control, guiding us. Some call it spirituality, some call it faith, some call it mysticism. But whatever label you put on it, it's the way God made us. God made us to seek him, to hunger and thirst after him, because he alone can fully satisfy us. And just as we lose our appetite, our hunger, when we are depressed or physically unwell, when there is no hunger for the presence of God, that too can be an indicator that something is wrong spiritually. Unfortunately, because that hunger we feel is so basic to our nature, we can begin to seek fulfilment in other areas, other things, instead of in seeking God. It's like eating nothing but junk food may have all the nutrients we need, but eventually it will dull our physical appetite. Trying to exist on things that are not quite God, or that replace God, can dull our spiritual appetite too. After a while, we stop being hungry. This can happen to Christians and non-Christians alike, as they look for happiness, and fulfilment in other areas other than their relationship with God. And it's interesting that today we got those leaflets about Vanguard to help people with their addictions. Sadly, there are Christians who allow their appetite for God to be dulled by other things, even dare I say, religious or church things. Now they come into worship is good, it's lovely to see all. Praying occasionally is good. And will, it will give us a hit for a while. But if we continue to snack our way through the day on junk food activities, and take God in small doses throughout the week, and somehow hope that on Sunday we can just catch up on our time with God, then we will always be on short rations. In our call to worship it says, So we will give honour to you as long as we live, we will lift up our hands to your name, our souls will be filled with rich foods, and our mouths praise you with lips of joy. And in our reading it says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So it's obvious from scripture that the imagery of hungering and thirsting after God is something we should be actively involved in. But spiritual hunger is just one path. There's also physical hunger. How can we be part of God's amazing plan for our lives and this community if there are people within it who are physically hungry? Offering to pray for them is good. Prayer works. But how can we go to God in prayer without actually working towards solving the problem? And how can we speak to people who do not know the power of prayer. Oh, I'll pray for you. And then walking away, knowing that they will still be hungry or their children will be hungry. Serving God in our homes, our families, and this community 
is more than prayer and more than coming to worship. It is doing something practical to alleviate the problem of physical hunger by supporting food banks, supporting other food schemes, and looking at what we're doing here at Peasley Cross to alleviate hunger and thirst. The Christian author, Ben Patterson, says in his book, Deepening Your Conversation with God, we have become satisfied with mere church, mere religious exertion, mere numbers and buildings, the things we can do. There is nothing wrong with these things, but they are no more than foam left by the surf on the ocean of God's glory and goodness. It's a wonderful, wonderful picture. The foam left by the surf on the ocean of God's glory and goodness. Physical hunger prompts us to look for nourishment. Spiritual hunger should prompt us in much the same way. Physical hunger prompts us to seek out something to fill us up, even if it's something that's not actually very good for us. Spiritual hunger should prompt us to seek out God, the one who is good and good for us. So when it comes to our hunger, let's seek out God rather than the refrigerator. And when it comes to helping our community to know God, let's look to filling their bellies and not just the pew. And I'll finish with a prayer by author Tommy Tenney. Lord Jesus, my soul aches at the mere mention of your name. My heart leaps for every rumour of your coming and each possibility that you will manifest your presence. I am not satisfied with mere spiritual dainties. I am ravenously hungry for you in your fullness. I am desperate to feast on the bread of your presence and quench my thirst with the wine of your spirit. So be ravenous. Be ravenous spiritually. Be ravenous physically maybe. But use that hunger to seek out what God wants you to do in your lives and in this community to stop other people feeling ravenous. Amen. Amen. We now enter a time of communion, a time where we come together as the people of God to meet with God through bread and wine or whatever you have to hand. We read in the book of James chapter 2. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. We come to this table knowing that we can access food and drink. Knowing that although we might not have everything we want, we have everything we need. Our God is a providing God, the one who fulfills our needs, sometimes to overflowing. And it is this overflowing, this abundance, that we can share with those who might need a little extra. <laughs> so as we consider this table, consider this bread, this <coughs> wine, let us also consider those who might be struggling to feed themselves, other family members, or their children. And let us be open to the spirit of generosity and love. Let's listen.
women and children in an upper room on a night like no other. He gave them even his enemy bread and wine. Jesus fed people, men, women and children in town squares, synagogues and on the cross. He gave them hope and life. This food is still available to us and all who need it. This food, this bread and wine, is still available to all who seek to know the truth of Jesus. So let us eat and drink. Let us remember that we can go to our God hungry and leave full. We can seek spiritual nourishment and be fed by the one who feeds us with love, truth, and grace.
and action against hunger and others. And we thank you for the generosity shown by people here at Peasley Cross and the wider community as they give of their time and talents to provide food via late lunch and other donations. As we consider how we can help and support those we know and those who are strangers to us, we pray that your love will guide our steps as we continue to serve you. So thank you, Lord, for being our bread of life, the one who satisfies us and fills us with good things. Help us to open people's eyes to recognize you as the only bread of life for their spiritual hunger. Amen. Now let's just say together the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last song is a song of thanks to our God. Now thank you for all our God. So let's stand and let's sing.
birthday, you can draw her name as well for this. So it's still so Doris and Margaret. Sing happy birthday to, draw, to Margaret and Doris. Is it Margaret and Doris or Doris and Margaret? I don't know if I'm going to get back to this. Margaret. Margaret and Doris. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Say the grace to each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 